Alright, ladies, gentlemen, gamers, and TikTok enjoyers, welcome back yet again to another episode of us reacting to Dark Dimension TikToks. So, I've had a busy day, I've had a busy week, but I always make time for some reactions. Because there's the easiest thing to do, and I enjoy doing them. So, as always, I would like to put forth that if anyone can add my main account on TikTok, it's called Technics, akin to Technics channel, and you guys can send me videos on there, and if they're good enough, they'll appear here. Please, please, please do so. I would love more content to react to. But regardless, if not, I will always react to things I find. So, last time we did some TikTok reactions, we couldn't actually get through all of them. Now, I was having some trouble with the site again. I thought we solved it. I thought clearing the cookies would work, and for the most part, it did. But the site again today was giving me a little bit of an issue. But I seem to have sorted it out using some voodoo magic. Regardless, I'm now scared. So I'm hoping to up the frequency of how many videos I do per video, but we'll see. At the same time, I need to do this kind of quickly because I have a lot of other things to do. And at the same time, I want to do a lot, so this might take a while. So we'll see where it ends out. But starting off, we already start off with a very good thing. So even though this is a series that's depressing, it's a series about bad things, we're starting off with a very, very good character. My good old friend, which I don't know personally, Jeff Jackson, which I wish was our representative in New York, but he's not. We have AOC, I believe. But regardless, let's see what Jeff Jackson has to say about the world and how depressing it is. On Friday night. Also, I'm, I'm sad I had to interrupt it already, but we haven't gotten to the funny stuff yet. I know last episode I said we were going to get to the funny stuff, and we didn't. I hoped we had got to it, but we didn't. Hopefully this episode will get to the funny, because like I said, this is a series about dark dimension shit, convincing you that this world is fucked and it's really bad. But hopefully, hopefully, there's some comedy in here that will lighten the mood. But we'll see how you guys think of it. So anyway, let's, let's get started. Let's see what's going on. Jeff Jackson, tell us what's up! Night for the first time in history, a okay, judge single-handedly okay. ordered that a specific drug be taken off the market. So... As I've said in the other episodes too, a lot of things are in our time specifically are happening for the first time in history. And unfortunately, it's a lot of bad. I'm not going to sit here and lie and say it's not a lot of good. A lot of good things, especially medically and technologically, are happening in our time too that have never before happened in history. A lot of times in human history, in terms of like progress and innovation, the graph has gone up and then it's gone down. And then it's gone back up and it's gone back down. But never, ever before in our history have we gone to the point where we are today. We have experienced in the past, I would say, 100 years more growth just technologically and progress rise than we've ever had in the history of mankind. And it blows it out of the water. Like if you were to see a graph of how much we've advanced in the past 100 years versus the millions of years we've been on this earth, at least I think it's millions, if not, you know, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, then you're going to see, like, we have made so much progress in the past hundred years that it's mind-blowing. Our minds and our bodies can't keep up, and we don't know the effects of a lot of things that are happening, and we won't know for a very long time. But regardless, a lot of things for the first time in history are happening, so let's see. The drug is mifepristone, and one of okay, its uses yes, is for yes. medical abortions, oh, which medical. is how most of the abortions in this country occur. Which we just, the which judge we just talked is a about, federal medical. district judge from Texas, and mm. his order says two things. First, mm. that the FDA yes. was wrong to approve this drug because... So the FDA is wrong. The federal level is wrong. The state person, the state judge, is saying the federal level is wrong. Now, don't get me wrong. I hate both the federal and the state. I just hate the government in general. They take too much taxes from me. Fuck New York. But... You know, at a certain point, I would say the federal government does have our best interests at in mind because they have to be federal. They have to do like, you know, whole sweeping things to all 50 states. States are more specific. Now, you love them or you hate them, whether they help you or they hurt you. But states are definitely more specific. But I don't know if I would trust the decision of a state over the decision of the whole sweeping government. Because last time the states disagreed with the government, we had a civil war. And that's when they really disagreed. And they lost. I'd like to say they lost, but, you know. Because it's not safe for women who take it. The counter-argument is that... And also, the FDA, you know, they know their shit, for the most part. Leaving the conspiracy theories aside, they're very much for the health of the people. I think we can all agree with that, sort of. Again, then I think of, like, what happened with, um... 
what was that shit called that happened in like the 1900s? It's when they, I don't want to say euthanized because that means they killed. It's when, oh, it was eugenics. Eugenics happened. Now, I don't know if eugenics was from the FDA. I have to do more research on that. But I remember eugenics was like a government thing. And, you know, we all know what that was. And that was not good. You know, the blind trust in the government never is good for the people. That it's been approved for over 20 years and is widely recognized to be safer than Tylenol. It's what approved for the? use in the first 10 weeks of pregnancy and is used in 80 countries. Wow. Second, the judge also banned sending any abortion medication through the mail. He did Bruh. this by reviving something called the Comstock Act, which was passed in 1873 and Comstock? was designed to use Comstock? the U.S. mail to impose a broad morality code by censoring what could and couldn't be sent through the mail. It said you couldn't mail anything related to contraception or abortion, but also anything obscene, lewd, lascivious, indecent, filthy, or vile. Now, this is the problem, and I believe Mr. Jackson's going to get to this. Now, I'll reiterate. The further back these TikToks are, the more I don't remember them. So the more TikToks we go through, the closer we'll get to the current time of me sending them, or closer. And then I'll start remembering them. So I don't know if Mr. Jackson goes over this, but... One of the main issues with this is it's subjective. So the government can use this in any way, shape, or form to ban whatever they think is lewd, lascivious, vile, indecent. And that's a big umbrella. And, you know, who are you arguing with? You're arguing with the guy who makes the rules. So you're never going to win the argument. So if they think something is indecent or vile and you say it's not, who are they going to go with? Themselves, because they make the rules, they enforce it. So this is a very scary thing. And the fact that this was in place, right, the fact that they revived it, this was never a thing that, like, went away. It was always there, just no one used it. So the fact that this was always here and no one used it means what other laws are in this country that, like, you know, obviously we ignore, similar to jaywalking, right? Everyone jaywalks. It's supposed to be illegal. No one is really going to jail for jaywalking unless the cops really want to be dicks. But even they're not that many dicks. Like, they're not to that level of dickery. The fact that this is being, like, revived is just stupid. This whole thing is stupid. This is a drug that is proven safer than Tylenol. People pop Tylenol like it's fucking drugs. And it is a drug. But they pop it like it's hard drugs. So the fact that they're banning this is so stupid. And it hasn't been in for women. Sorry, women. For since the 1930s. Oh, lovely. That's when a court ruled it could only be used if someone was specifically intending to mail something for illegal use in an abortion which is now illegal. But this medication is legal and can be used for things other than abortion, like oh. cancer treatment. Oh. This particular judge is very well known for his opposition to abortion. He ah, yes, yeah, so he's pushing his own agenda using his power. So it's not necessarily that people agree with him. He's just doing what he thinks is right, not listening to the people. Because let's be honest, while the Founding Fathers did put a thing in place, you know, they put, um the representation system of the people can vote for someone who represents them. Because if the people voted for what they want, the founding fathers knew this, I know this, I hope people know this. The general population is fucking stupid. People are fucking dumb. So if people got to have a very active or more active hand in our government, things would not go well because they would vote the entirely wrong way. So we elect people we think are smart to vote and do things for us, right? To vote on our behalf, to make decisions on our behalf that are hopefully best for us but you know realistically we see how that's going but that's the way it's supposed to be now this is a double-edged sword because as i'm about to argue sometimes the majority is right now not always because then i think back to the inquisition when you know if enough people said you were a witch you were a witch you'd get fucking burned and then back in the old olden days when people said the earth was round the church didn't believe it and everyone was a part of the church so you got burned but, you know, just because everyone believes it doesn't mean it's right. But with some things, it does. And I, I, you know, I would honestly think that with abortion and rights towards abortion, I would think enough people agree that, you know, it's okay to have this drug that's safer than Tylenol. And I think this judge is really just, you know, flexing his cock and his power. So let's see. He was handpicked by the plaintiffs among all the federal district judges in the country because they knew he was the most likely to rule for them. And he did. If no oh. other court steps in, then this Friday, his order goes into effect and will apply to all 50 states, what? including the ones that have passed laws allowing abortion medication. At least huh? that was the intent of his order. Appeals are underway, and people are asking for a delay in his order to give those appeals a chance to be heard. Also, 
On the same day last week, there was a ruling from a different judge in a different state that basically came to the opposite conclusion. Thank it goodness. protected access to mifepristone in a number of states, which means all of this is probably headed to the Supreme Court and would be their first major abortion case since overturning Roe versus Wade. Okay, and the fact that Roe versus Wade was overturned is like insane to me. Already, I've lost a lot of faith in the government. I've lost a lot of faith in the Supreme Court after what we saw last episode with the guy taking all the freaking, um, you know, all the bribery, essentially, and not reporting it. And then him being told by his colleagues to not report it, which, you know, just shows how they're all implicit in this bullshit. But at this point, it still baffles me how to this day we are arguing about these things as if like they need to be argued about how these are not basic rights. I mean, how a lot of things should be basic rights, but they're not. But I guess that's because it's a dark dimension. But anyway, one thing that I don't understand is how is this the court system? So if this person in Texas passes this, it's illegal everywhere. And then we have to play this weird cat and mouse game through the, you know, the weird ass legal system. And I would know because I work for lawyers, this weird ass legal system where things don't make sense. Like you have to do it in such an oddly specific way. It doesn't make sense. It, it's so weird. Reality just doesn't make sense anymore, man. To the congressional side. With how much time we're spending on this video, fucking, I don't think we're going to get through a lot of videos, but we'll see. Out of this, As a member of Congress, it is very telling that almost none of the anti-abortion members have said anything about this ruling that strikes Pussies. down abortion medication Pussies. across the country. Why is Jeez. that? Well, after Roe was overturned, off. the message was that this issue was simply being sat back to the states and that if your state wanted to approve it, it could. But what this ruling would mean is that when it comes to this... It doesn't matter what your state wants or how the people there vote. It would no. be a national ban. Which how how can someone in Texas, how can a judge in Texas make a national ban? Like, how is this allowed? Which is exactly the type of thing lots of members of Congress said wasn't going to happen after Roe is overturned. Oh, and look, look, something happens that is a slippery slope. And people say, oh, you know, don't worry. We just wanted this. It won't go further. You know what else happened with this? You know what else really mirrors that logic? World War II. Now, I'm not going to say too much because the algorithm already hates me and already blacklists me, but someone else in World War II, and I think we all know who I'm talking about, said, okay, you know, if you guys just give me this, I won't go further. And guess what they did? They gave him the land he wanted that he was asking for, and guess what he did? He went further, and we all know how that ended. So when they say, oh, yeah, don't worry, we won't go further than this. This won't happen if this happens. Don't fucking believe them. There's also concern about precedent here that would have nothing to do with abortion. If this ruling is allowed to stand, it means we're living in a country where the FDA can approve a drug. It can then be used for decades. There can be lots of evidence that it's very safe. And then one judge can have it pulled off the shelves nationwide. What? How? How can this be allowed? This makes no sense. There's things in reality that just make no sense. And this is one of them. That's never been the way this has worked. And it shouldn't be the way it could work. You're going to see lots of news about this over the next few weeks. Yeah, let's see if we actually do, because I feel like, especially with what's going on in France, and hopefully we'll get to us, but I, I don't think we will. There's a video that actually shows from a French person, mind you, what is actually going on in France and what's really happening and why they're really fighting. And I was shocked to see this and just... Lo and behold, the media yet again paints a picture for us that's not accurate. It's a little accurate, but it's not as accurate as we wanted to. This is why I always say, be distrustful of what you see online, be distrustful of the media, and question everything. Now, don't be exactly like me, because now I question too many things, and I don't know what's true and what's not. But even the French thing that we've been going over on this series, right? Even the French, you know, rioting and, and arguing for, like, not retiring after two years, it's not just that they're doing but that's what it's painted in the media. But that's a little off topic. We might get to that later. And I'll keep you posted. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. So yeah, pretty crazy shit. Pretty crazy shit how the FDA, the team of scientists, the team of smart people that look and see, I mean, again, you know, eugenics, but I don't know if eugenics was FDA. But, you know, the government and its team of federal drug administration people who research the shit, who see if this shit's safe, who know what they're talking about, right? Who are doctors, who are scientists, they research this shit, they tell if it's a safe. I don't think I trust a judge to make the decision if something is safe for my body because I don't think they know that, right? Now granted, 
I don't know this judge. Maybe he does, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't. But, like, how are we just going to ignore the doctors? This doesn't make any sense. But thank you very much, Mr. Jackson. I love this guy, dude. This guy is so straightforward. Anyone who, like, harbors and fosters communication just with everyone, like, everyday people. And this was a big thing back in the day with fireside, fireside chats with FDR. It really makes them personable, and it helps just on, like getting to know them level it helps on a very good uh social level right they're very good socially now who knows if what they're saying is true or who knows if they're good but it's a way to definitely deepen the trust of people if you interact with them in a more casual one-on-one -on -one way and you know this is historically true like i said from fdr's fireside chats but anyway really good start really good start love jeff jackson thank you jeff jackson let's go next Poland says that it's the new leader of Europe and that old Europe has fallen. They also said that the what alliance the? with the United States is the absolute foundation of European security. Adding that some uh -huh. Western leaders dream of cooperation with Russia and China. And that old Europe believed Russia's lies, but that Poland can see truth. <laughs> that appearing to be a direct jab at France. And Poland Jesus. saying it plans to create the strongest military in Europe in collaboration with the U.S. Follow to stay in the loop. Thank you, Mr. DeFranco. So anyway, this is kind of weird, right? Oh my god, I just saw the comment. All thanks to little Yachty for bringing the walk to Poland. Th this, that was a good fucking comment. But anyway, yeah, so this is crazy. I feel like now more than ever, and especially they're going to say this in the media because they love generating buzz around this because, you know, at least newspapers do because they're dying. But media in general, you know, a lot of media is dying to people like Philip DeFranco who are spreading the news to the younger generation through the internet. A lot of old school media... Like, for instance, um, I think the New York Times, I mean, obviously this applies to New York, but even the New York Times, they're, like, begging people to take their subscription, and I honestly think it's because they're dying, right? New York Times is a newspaper. Their newspaper is definitely dying. Newspaper is going down. So they're, like, begging people, please subscribe to our site. Please get the news on our site. It's only this much a month. We'll give you a deal for a year. Please, you don't have to use the newspaper. Use our site. Because they're dying, because people get their news for free in a way easier to digest format, not from old dinosaurs, but from young people like us, like Philip DeFranco. Well, he's not really too young, but basically like that. But that's a little side tangent here. I feel like now more than ever in the media, we see like a lot of things happening that are like against America, right? Look at Poland. Poland is coming out saying, yeah, you know, we support America. They obviously want to be on America's side. But... I don't know the full story here, but it sounds like France is taking Russia's side, which I'm very surprised about. And it just seems like a lot of people are starting to get sick of America's shit and starting to ally against us and trying to actually fight us. Because if there's one thing that's proven true in history, when everyone groups up against you, you can't fight them all. Look at what happened with Germany. Again, going back to World War II. But anyway, uh, this is pretty interesting, though, because the biggest thing that's happening is... China and Russia and uh, the whole association called BRICS, which is, I'm trying to remember what the B is, I don't remember, Brazil, I think it's Brazil, Russia, India, China, and I forgot what the S is, but it's basically called BRICS, and it's all these different, you know, countries and stuff, and they're basically trying to not use the dollar anymore, they're trying to make a new you know, world currency. And there have been other world currencies before. This was a big scare, like, oh my God, the US dollar is going to get dethroned. This is going to ruin everything. From what I've seen from people who actually have like researched this and looks into this, and I might put some of those videos in here. I don't remember. Like I said, we're too far back. But um, the US dollar ain't going anywhere anytime soon. And the yuan isn't even on the list. Like it's on the list, but it's way lower than all the other currencies used worldwide. Like, it's a big scare right now, but that's all it really is. It could get worse. I'm not saying it can't, but the media is definitely painting it in a really bad way, and it's worse than it is. Again, I'm not saying it can't get bad, but people are overreacting right now. The U.S. dollar ain't going anywhere, at least not yet. But anyway, that's pretty good. Thank you, Philip DeFranco. Let's go next. This week saw big announcements from major retail chains that could mean serious oh. trouble for $11 trillion of commercial oh. real estate oh, and the banks that need it. Yesterday, Whole Foods banks. Wow. closed its flagship San Francisco store after just one year, oh. citing employee safety, meaning theft, violent crime, bathrooms full of needles. Jesus. Meanwhile, Walmart is closing half its stores in Chicago. And we've actually talked about this on another episode. Stealing is so rampant. It's more profitable for them to close the stores than to keep them open because there's so much stealing. And we've already talked about the whole, like, process they have with dealing with stealing. You know, just let them go. Just let them steal because security is not allowed to stop them. They're not allowed to touch them. They get in trouble. 
you know, who knows if that's right or not. We saw the little, you know, the little funny cartoon in the gas station with um the guy telling his employee to use kung fu and like, you know, dragon fisting him and burning him, which was pretty funny. If you didn't see that, check out last episode. But um, yeah, it's weird. Like, that is getting really bad. And again, this might be a higher level issue of just society, which who knows how the fuck to solve that. But yeah, it, it looks like it's not just Walmart. I mean, we don't have Walmart in New York, unfortunately, but Whole Foods, oh man. Also citing crime and theft. Walmart said they were losing tens of millions on the stores and I, noted that they've never that. made money in Chicago after That's 17 true. years of trying. Dude, Chirac is just so bad. They've never made money in Chicago. Chicago is just fucked. Also, I love the comment here, right? The comment on the right here is American cities are becoming dystopian hellscapes. Boy, isn't that true. And look at what this other guy's saying. I wouldn't open anything in Chicago, even if it were rent free. Dude, Chicago is so bad. I've never been there, but everything I hear about Chicago is like Detroit. Like Detroit is also another one where it's just fucking ass. Walmart also closed its last remaining stores in Portland, laying wow. off 600 workers after, Oof. quote, record-breaking thefts. Oh, my God. The nearby Nike store was also Not shuttered Nike. after mass shoplifting, Not the including Jays. 15 overnight break-ins in two months. That's Bro. about one every four days. Imagine getting your store robbed every four days. What? Also, this other comment right here on the right is saying, USA is literally the Roman Empire falling and declining undeniable anymore. See, I don't disagree with that. Well, I don't know if that's true because, again, we have to question what we see versus the reality. I think it's very hard to know the reality now because there's so much information. There's so much misinformation. It's very hard to know what is really going on. Even though you could very much think you know, I don't think it's accurate. But... It definitely looks like in the media that the fucking USA is falling apart. Like, bro, it looks like people are turning against us. It looks like we we don't have our own things in order. There's rampant just, you know, what is it called? Ah, oh, fuck, I'm forgetting the words. There's rampant uh, corruption. That's the word. There's just huge rampant corruption in our government and things that just aren't making sense because people are trying to just get their ideas passed out and they have egos. And it's crazy. It's not for the people. It's my idea is right. I want to prove it. And their idea is the wrong one. But they still want to prove it because they think it's right. But it's crazy. You'd have to hire a guy just to tally up what was stolen out of the storeroom every night. Wow. This shouldn't have been a surprise. In December, Walmart and Home Depot CEOs both warned that retail theft was hiking prices and closing stores. And like we said, this hurts them. But it hurts us more. It hurts the people who actually pay for things and follow the law more because think about it. These places, as bad as they are, as much profit as they make. Walmart is cheap for people. Walmart helps people. Even though they do profit off of us, they help us too. But if there's no Walmart, who's hurting the most? The people who go to Walmart who actually pay for cheap shit because now they have to go somewhere else where things are more expensive because of the fuckers who steal things. And now they might have to steal things and it's just going to make the problem worse. Home Depot said retail theft is, quote, spreading faster than COVID. I don't disagree. that. The epicenter that. is big like cities, true. whose administrations fell apart during COVID. Oh, yeah. Lockdowns immediately started driving people out of the cities because remote workers no longer wanted to live in expensive and increasingly crime-ridden hellholes. You know what's so ironic? I was about to say they don't want to live in hellholes, and this guy said it for me. He has a PhD person, by the way. He has a doctorate. At one point, it cost 10 times more for a moving truck from California to Texas than the other way around. Wow. Because nobody wanted into California, but a whole lot of people wanted to move out. And like we know from last episode, or one of the ones before this, Marjorie Taylor Greene wants to, you know, make it so you can't vote within five years if you're a Democrat going to a Republican state. So if you want to move, bad for you. But the stores held on hoping things might go back to the way they were. Yeah, right. Now, they're giving up hope. Damn. San Francisco is particularly bad. Oh, the yeah. crime was front and center last week when the founder of Cash App, Bob Lee, oh, yeah, was stabbed got, to death on a San killed. Francisco street. He actually moved to Miami to escape San Francisco's crime, but was back in town for a one-day meeting. I don't know if that's true, but if that is, just think about how unlucky this guy's. This guy made it. He created Cash App, He's, he's set for life with money, right? And for one day, he goes back to San Francisco and he gets fucking stabbed to death. Now, who knows if this was an inside job? Who knows if it was a hit? Who knows if it was actually, you know, just random stabbing? 
But if it was a random stabby, stabbing, first of all, that's tragic. I feel bad for his family and him. But oh my god, that is just unlucky. Holy shit. Now, regular people have had enough. We've been had enough. I mean, not enough to do something, but we've been had enough mentally. They are getting out before their house prices crash. Which is too late. They're already starting to crash. They're already down 200000 across San Francisco. Good. The city itself is draining at a record speed, Damn turning straight. San Francisco into a ghost town. These cities need to stop being stupid, and I'll use New York as the example. Manhattan is a place with a lot of stuff. Oh, hold on. Max. Max. Okay, anyway. So, Manhattan is a place where a lot of things are overly fucking expensive. They're extremely expensive. Rent for one of them, right? Property taxes, rent. The city is draining because people just can't afford it after COVID. So because of this, Manhattan's losing a lot of money. Now, not enough to where it matters because there's enough rich people to cover the slack. But I feel like eventually it's just going to get to a point where it's a ghost town and these places need to learn they can't charge these ridiculous prices. There has to be a limit because the problem is rich people ruin everything in society and in the housing market because they can make up for a lot of the poor people leaving because they can cover ridiculous prices. But eventually they're going to get sick of it too because they're greedy and they're going to leave and people are going to learn. 29.5% of offices in San Francisco at the moment are empty. That's Good. almost one in three. So Pre-pandemic, that was 3.6%. You had to sell your firstborn to get office space in downtown San Francisco. <laughs> There's now over 27 million yeah. square feet of empty office space with millions more coming up for renewal where the tenant may just walk away. They should. One major developer in San Francisco just walked away from an $84 million project they bought Ooh. in 2019. They walked away They just gave it back it. to the bank. Like, fuck Gap it. sold their $80 million building for a 40% haircut. I feel like Gap is dying, by the way. I don't know. I don't know if that's true, but I feel like Gap is one of the next stores to go out of business that you would have never thought they would have went out of business. And another $250 million project is getting bids about one quarter pre-pandemic price. That's a 75% haircut. Jesus. In other cities, it's not much better. Bloomberg says nationwide vacant space is at a record high, almost 20%. Good. So one in five offices in America right now are empty. Now, I also have personal experience with this because in New York, right, when I, I work in Midtown Manhattan, I've seen from when I started working almost a year ago, there were stores that were open, Starbucks, AT&T, and you know, big chain stores. And now when I walk to work, these stores have been empty for months because the, I don't know if they couldn't afford it. I don't know if they just wanted to get out, but considering it's Midtown Manhattan, right? I mean, they probably couldn't afford it because the prince, the prices, like I said, for rent there are insane. It's like 30 to 80 K a month for a space that's not that big. So they probably left because it's not profitable because people are leaving the cities. And if they leave the cities, if the big carriers and the big corporations leave the cities, I mean, they're obviously going to have some footprint there. They're not going to leave everything. But if they're going to leave most of it, a lot of people are going to leave, too, because it's going to be more inconvenient. You basically have a space where, like, there's not that many people. There's not that many big corporations. There's some. And everything's just unaffordable. So the rich people are going to be the only ones there. And they don't want to be there because now there's no business. So they're going to move. And so, just a month after the bank runs, we've already got a new perfect storm on the horizon. Lovely. Because if one in five retail and commercials isn't getting rent, the owner is going to default on his bank loan. Because that's all we are. We're just loans and debt. There's about $11 trillion in commercial loans outstanding. Lovely. That's about 20 to 50 times more than the capital buffers in the entire U.S. banking system. Amazing. If trillions in commercial loans have to take another 40% <laughs> or 75% haircuts we could see another 2008 style crash oh, to my. go with the one we've already got for the oh. fed induced bank panics oh lovely i think the bigger concern here is what breaks next our obscenely over leveraged ponzi industrial complex <laughs> is shot through with rube goldberg monstrosities <laughs> where it's only a matter of time until something breaks honestly and the guardians don't even understand what they're watching all right we'll be watching see you next time this guy is amazing, dude. Professor uh, Stonge, really nice guy. I, I like this guy. But this is just insane. He said it perfectly. What's the next thing to break? Because the whole way the system has been set up at this point, 
It's just all fucking breaking. It's not set up well. Anyway, let's go next. There is a disturbing trend that has gotten traction in our cities. Oh, People are actually really? going to Home Depot, buying spray foam for $4.38, uh -oh. filling up parking meters. Now, no this way. is absolutely despicable. Why? Okay, this is a funny one. Why anyone would go to Home Depot and buy spray foam for $4.38 to, <laughs> to disable parking meters is beyond me. Our cities need those taxes. <laughs> Portland? Yeah, it's so funny. He just put his, put an image up, and there's just trash everywhere, and it just says Portland. They need that money to keep our cities running clean. Bro. Holy moly. This does not look okay. This looks like France. And free of crime, and I just can't imagine why anyone would do such a thing. To go to Home Depot and buy spray foam for $4.38 <laughs> is unbelievable to me. And furthermore, they're wearing COVID masks and hoodies. And they're paying with cash. Oh, you no. see these criminals, make sure that you act accordingly. <laughs> Yo, this guy is funny. So, if you can't tell, I'll kind of ruin the surprise here. I'll spoil it for everyone. He's basically, con you know, telling you to do it. At this point in time, like, the cities obviously aren't doing good things with our fucking income. Obviously, they're running, they need to run some things with it. But a lot of it is getting wasted. In New York alone, right? And I, I keep using New York because I live here. New York collects a lot of money in taxes, a lot, from the tolls. To get into New York, you need to pay a toll of like $15. To leave, it's free, because they don't care if you leave. But to come in, you need to pay money, which, you know, doesn't make sense. But you need to pay so much money, right? Things look like shit here. Things are not maintained. There's potholes everywhere. The streets are cracked. The sidewalks suck. The only areas in New York that look good is Midtown Manhattan where the rich people are because they pay for it themselves to maintain it, not the government. The government literally just takes our money. I don't know what they do with most of it. But anyway, pretty good video. Let's go next. Where did you go to medical school? I did not go to medical school. I'm sorry. Already, already a good one. Sorry? I did not go to medical school. That's what I thought. Why do you think you or anyone else at Twitter had the medical expertise to censor a doctor's expert opinion? Our policies regarding COVID were designed to protect individuals. We were seeing you guys censored Harvard educated doctors, Stanford educated Harvard, doctors, doctors Stanford. that are educated in the best places in the world, and you silenced those voices. Did the US government ever contact you or anyone at uh, Twitter to pressure Twitter uh, to moderate or censor certain tweets? Yes uh, or no? We receive legal demands to remove content from the platform from the US government and and there it is. Governments all around the world, those are published on a third-party website and anyone can review Thank them. God for Matt Taibbi. Thank God for Elon Musk for allowing to show us in the world that Twitter was basically a subsidiary of the of FBI, the censoring yeah. real medical voices. Like, I don't know if there's any more information about this, if, like, the other side isn't as guilty as, you know, they're making them look here. Like I said, I always question things, but this looks really bad. Like... Twitter, this is what I don't understand. Why go against the experts of opinions? Now, the problem is, and this is another like society level problem, this is a higher level problem of we just don't trust professionals anymore. The government is supposed to be professional. We don't trust them. The doctors are supposed to be professional. And there's a whole bunch of controversy with the doctors with what happened with COVID that we don't trust them either. We just don't trust people anymore because why would we? We're finding out now because of the internet and because of dissemination of information, they're all fucking lying. So why would we trust them even if they are trustworthy? It's like one bad apple ruins the bunch. It's sad. Next. Oh, this one is a funny one. I just put this into land in the mood, man. I just actually agree with it. The turtle looks pissed. The turtle looks like a penis. I have no clue who this guy is, by the way. But he looks evil. Look 
at the turtle, yo. What the hell? <laughs> okay, we're not gonna watch this whole thing. I like how one comment says that's actually a tortoise, but nice song. I forgot what that's called, but the main way to find out information on the internet, the main way to find the right answer isn't to ask the question, it's to put out the wrong answer because someone's going to correct you. And look, we see it right here from, from Brian, that's actually a tortoise. <laughs> but who is, who is Klaus Schwab? Let's see. Klaus Schwab. He is a German engineer, economist, and founder of the World Economic Forum. I'm not too sure what that is, but he definitely looks like he could be evil. Anyway, pretty good. Pretty nice song. I hope that lightened the mood for all the depressing shit. Uh, let's keep going. You're going to want to go ahead and hit the save button because you're going to want to share this one with your friends. Oh, let's see if we're going to. I forgot what this one is, but let's see. We're still too far behind. I still don't remember sending myself these. Ask me all the time. What do you think has changed? What do you think has changed in the mindset of the American worker? It's not My worth it. My answer is simple. It's not COVID. worth it. Or the COVID. average blue collar worker, the American worker, watched the entire system turn its back on us. True. You had essential workers being told that they had to go to work while their children weren't going to school. And we That's one big thing, too. School is used to teach kids. I mean, school is just a mess in general. The whole school system is broken. Like the other guy said, what's going to break next? The school system is broken. The fucking, just everything is broken. The prison system is broken. The job system's definitely broken. But um, a lot of things are broken. But one thing that school does do and does function as is a daycare. When parents go to work, their kids are in school. So they don't have to take care of them. And we all got told, figure it out. Figure it Nurses out. and doctors treating three, four, five patients at a time. God, if there was ever an industry I would be scared for, it's the medical industry. When COVID hit, they were thrown to the wolves, bro. Like, people were quitting left and right. And the people who stayed just, it was like living hell, probably. Oh, my God. Worried about bringing it home to their children, being told, figure it out. Service industry employees being told, hey, we're shutting the doors. Well, what are we supposed to do? Figure it know. out. Figure it out. <laughs> Hardworking guys and girls working for companies for 20 years that now the company's decided to close the door and do layoffs. What are we supposed to do? Figure it out. See, this is where I kind of like disagree here. Just because you work for a company for 20 years, if the company is going under, right? Like obviously the big ones, they can afford to keep employees, but they're not going to. They want to pad their bottom line. But the smaller mid to small companies, right? When they close their doors because they can't make enough money because of COVID, I'm not going to blame them when they say figure it out. They're not your fucking parents. They can't take care of you. Now it does suck, right? I feel for, for the workers more. But at the end of the day, this company is not your family. They're not supposed to, like, you know, figure out your life for you. Now, again, they're getting fucked, too. And I'm not talking about the big ones. The big ones definitely had an obligation to keep people and pay them, and they didn't. I, I fully agree with the big ones. And maybe even the medium ones. But the small companies, how can you put this on them? Like the mom and pop stores, right? Okay, COVID's here. We're not making enough profit. We can't afford to keep the store open. Sorry, you're getting laid off. Well, what am I supposed to do? Well, I don't know. What are we supposed to do, right? Like, what is the store supposed to do? You can't figure it out for them. How are they supposed to figure it out for you? But again, the mid to big sized companies, they definitely like, they definitely like threw the bag with this. They definitely fucked it. You had the people who never got to stop. Police, fire, medic. Hey man, there's, there's some stuff going on and I'd like to be able to take care of my family and make sure everybody's okay. No. But if you call out, you're going to lose your job. Now that companies are starting back up and everything's kind of going back to normal, companies are wondering why they can't find employees. We're and sick we of this shit. You, you turned your back on us. And yes. then we found out that you guys were getting money from the government to stay open. Oh. Large corporations were getting money to stay afloat, and they still decided to cut people and record record profits. One of the biggest things that I hope people notice is greed. Greed is such a powerful thing. Two weeks notice is based off respect, and if you're not going to have the respect to give your employees two weeks, which they don't, well, then what's the point? Corporate America is willing to have the mentality that your employees are nothing but replaceable assets. Well, True. then we can have the same thing, too. The job is nothing but a replaceable asset.
And the sad part is, even if we have this mentality, there's enough of us that need a job that even with this mentality, they still have to work. So ultimately, the companies mostly went out from this. I mean, obviously, they're going to get hurt by it. They're going to lose out on some good employees, but there's always someone to take the job. We all got told the same thing for a long time. You better be grateful you have this job. Suck my dick. We got a long list of applicants waiting to replace you. That is true. Yeah, we've been short staffed for the last three years. At Not because there's a lack of applicants, because they don't want to hire more, because they want to save more money. Leads me to believe you don't have anybody. That's where I disagree. Okay, very nice video. Next. Representative Jones, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, will the sponsor yield to a series of questions? Chairman Reagan. So this guy, I, I remember this one in specific. I remember myself sending me this one from the past. This guy is cool, yo. This guy is a young guy, obviously, right? And I'm telling you, once the new generation goes into the government, I really hope they don't like get turned evil by the system. And I really hope we, we change it for the better. I kind of realistically see us changing it a little bit, not fully. It's not going to you know, just become good because you know, even my generation is bad. We have our, our problems. But it's going to be way better than what it is. I, I, I have a feeling. I, you know, I have a hope, not a feeling. A hope. And this is why. Look at this guy. This guy is no nonsense. I love Justin Jones. Hi, yo. Representative Jones. Thank you. Um, Representative Reagan, do you not believe that college students are mature enough to talk about issues like race and systemic racism, some of the concepts you want to ban and have tried to prohibit being discussed at the college level? So just to give context, as we saw here, um, or as we heard here, so this other guy is trying to ban talking about these things in college, systemic racism and stuff like that, right? Because I don't know, he doesn't like it. And this is one thing I'm very much like against. It's the, you know, once they try and counter the dissemination of information, once they try and restrict information, I mean, look at books like, fuck, look at books like Fahrenheit 451, I, I believe that's the name, where they, you know, they try and restrict information from people. Information is such a powerful thing and having it be free, even if it's bad, right? We need to learn from our mistakes, which is something, I don't know why it keeps getting brought up, but something Germany doesn't want to do. But, uh... Yeah, World War II in Germany. Really interesting things that keep getting brought up here. Excuse me. But, like, it's crazy. Like, it's crazy that these things are happening in this time. Like, I would expect these to happen when we were, like, stupider, when the internet wasn't a thing, when information wasn't as widely accessible as it is. But when things like the, the other drug, right, that Jeff Jackson was talking about, that have evidence that are provable to be, like, working and good and safe, and these still get attacked and banned? Like, we're, there's no logic. We're a world devoid of logic now, even though we have all this information. It's crazy. Chairman Reagan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, to the rep look, look at what Mr. Reagan does here. Look at this. Look at this guy. Representative, I believe in God. All else is settled by facts and data. So he said, like, what kind of an answer was that? I believe in God. Oh, like, why are you banning teachings about systemic racism? Why are you banning our history? I believe in God. Huh? And he says facts and, and whatever. That's not answering the question. You're just saying words. Representative Jones. Mr. Speaker, he didn't, um, he, that's not an answer. Y yeah, like what the hell? Um, let's try again. Do you believe that college students are mature enough to handle conversations about systemic racism and the history of oppression in America that you're trying to prohibit under this bill? So the only answers that we should accept here are either a yes or a no answer. If Mr. Reagan does not say yes or no, he's dodging the question. Chairman Reagan. And he can explain afterward why he thinks that, but it's a yes or a no question. You can explain after. Let's let's see. Let's see what Mr. Reagan is going to do, which, you know, I'll give you a little spoiler alert. He's not going to do anything crazy, but anything we don't expect. But you're going to see. You're going to see how everyone... The, Senator Reagan is like an allegory, or it's like a metaphor for how our government works. Oh, like, can you solve this problem? Can you answer this? And let's see. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have addressed your question already, sir. Yeah, I answered your question. God, religion. Representative Jones. So we're playing not answer, okay. I love when people call out bullshit so blatantly. I love when they do that because a lot of things in government and in the law world and in the legal world, they try and one-up each other and they try and do these things. And it's sort of like an unspoken thing. Like, okay, don't mention it, right? Like, I do it to you, you do it to me, but we don't call it what it is. This guy, Representative Justin Jones, he just came out and said it. 
Oh, so this is what we're doing. We're playing the no answering game. <laughs> um, Representative Reagan, what type, you, you call this the freedom of expression bill, Ironic. but it's prohibiting concepts from being discussed freely on college campuses. Like, this can't be real. Like, this can't be, like, you would think this is scripted. This is the freedom of expression bill that's banning talking about history. What? And it's instituting a rogue reporting process where students can report professors huh? for teaching this list of 16, 17 issues. Um, can so if they teach these issues, which I don't know the full list, right? I'm not going to sit here and say some of those maybe should or shouldn't be banned. But just from the list, you know, from the things in the list he he's talked about, he's mentioned, like systemic racism and stuff. Like, bruh, you could get reported if you teach this. What? Can you can you explain the impetus for this bill? What what is what is the origin? What I have no clue what that means, by the way. The impetus. What motivated you to 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 write this bill? It, it seems like it's based off of white fragility, fears of teaching the truth of history. What, what was your reason for writing this bill? Chairman Reagan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This bill was bought to, brought to me by a dean of college education. Bullshit. But it might be true. Uh, who I worked with, in addition to another university, also contributed to this bill. That was my motivation, sir. Representative Jones. So his motivation is other people told him to write this. Can you can you name that person? Who who asked you to bring this legislation? What an amazing question. Who? Who did this? Chairman Reagan. I would prefer not to, sir. That's between me and the, the person who brought it to me. If you wish to uh, discuss that in private, I'd be glad to do it. Representative Jones. See, I don't understand that, right? Because if he discusses that in private, what's to stop Representative, um, Thank you. Representative Jones from just, you know, discussing it in private and then coming out and be like, okay, these are the people who wanted this. Like, what, is he going to pinky promise not to tell anyone? Is it against the law to know? Like, what is this? I'll tell you why they don't want to know. They don't want to be freaking, like, attacked. Representative Reagan, you grew up at a time where America was segregated. Um, under, this, under this bill, we, we can't teach that history. Um, oh. So I'm just trying to figure out how will we be honest about our history if you're, pro if you're prohibiting... Again, sounds like Germany. Um, ...any concepts about America's racist history, it says here. We can't talk about um, any type of, of unequal system that ascribe character traits, values, moral, ethical codes, privileges onto a certain race. Bruh. You say that we can't talk about the history of struggle in America. Can you explain what? how we would talk about these issues and, and why you're so fearful about even college students discussing them? See, this is a big thing I always heard. I always heard from like middle school and high school, like, oh, once you get to college, that's the real world. You're an adult now. They're not going to baby you. This bill sounds like it's treating them like children. Like, it sounds like they, they don't know what they're, they could speak about. They're too fragile. We have to protect them. We have to, like, not teach them certain things. Like, what? Hmm? And I'll tell you this. After school, once you get into the real world, for most of us, your day-to-day -day becomes mostly the same, and you learn a lot less now. If school does one thing, it exposes you to a lot of different things, and you learn a lot. Later on in life, once you have your job, and hopefully not like me, when it's a 9 to 5, and you do the same thing every day, you learn a lot less. You're just experienced and exposed to a lot less. And, you know, the majority of things you're going to learn is going to come from your formative years in school. After that, you'll still learn things, just not as much or not as high as a rate. So if you're not going to learn it in school, there's a very high chance if they ban this, a lot of people won't know about this history unless they see it online. And the way they see it online is through fucked up jokes. So, Jim Reagan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your assertion is incorrect, sir. It does not prohibit discussing these. So, like, I can't, I can't believe it. Like, this can't be real. It is, though, and it baffles me. He just read the bill in front of him. Right? He read John Reagan's bill in front of him. He's like, oh, it says we can't talk about these things on this bill. John Reagan responded right by saying, you're wrong. Like, we're, we're just denying logic. We're denying reality. That's like if I come up to you, I slap you. And you, you ask me, why did you slap me? And I tell you, I didn't slap you. Like, are we just lying? Representative Jones. Um, Representative Reagan, this is under prohibited concepts. These are, these are, just, these are things he wrote that, this. according to this bill, um, under present law, the following concepts are defined as divisive concepts. 
And under this law, there's a reporting process where students can report professors for teaching these concepts. This sounds like fascism. This sounds like authoritarianism. This does not sound like democracy or freedom. And so again, this bill is very troubling to anybody. We ain't in a democracy though. Let's get that straight. Anybody who believes in constitutional rights and who believes in... What's the thing that like is when the rich are like the elite rule the everything? Plutocracy? I I don't remember because again, I learned it in school uh, so long ago. But... We have a system of power now, even if we call it a democracy, which it's not, it's a representative democracy or, or whatever the fuck it is. It's not a democracy though. But um, we actually have the one where it's just the rich or the elite like controlling everything and they puppet, they puppet it like something else. <laughs> in, in, in America's promise of a freedom of expression, you are targeting professors and college students from talking about race and from talking about the history of America. I think it is shameful what you're trying to do. And, and I'm trying to get um, an answer as to see what is um, the origin of this bill, but you're being evasive because I don't think that you don't even know what the purpose of this bill is besides to feed into this racist narrative that you've been promoting all session. And so my Representative Jones. It's a shame it ended there. But like, Jesus Christ, what is this? Like, this is comical, but it's scary that it's comical. Like, what can I do besides laugh at this if I wasn't crying? Like, what the hell? A very amazing video. And when I say amazing, I mean like it's amazing in terms of it shows how dark this dimension is. But let's go next. World War III almost started last year, according to these leaked documents. Bro. A Russian jet fired a missile at a manned British aircraft flying over the Black Sea in September of last huh? year. With luckily the missile failing and not launching properly. Just imagine that. If that missile did not fail, we might not be here today. Turns out that the Russian pilot misinterpreted what the radar operator said to him and thought that he was clear to fire. And the UK now escorts their surveillance aircraft in the Black Sea with at least one fighter jet because of Good. the incident. This is just one Good. of six different instances of Russia almost starting six. World War III by engaging Western aircraft six. that are detailed in the documents. Follow to stay in the loop. World Dude, I feel like Russia is just so nervous and they're on a hair trigger. Like, if this is one of six, like, bro, what? And I love the comment here. Object cleared, do not fire. And then the pilot's like, cleared to fire? Like, he's like, how do you misinterpret that? Bro, this is crazy. What if they had secret orders or something? Who knows? This is fucking crazy. Like, there's probably so many times we got so close to, like, ending ourselves, but we somehow haven't because I think truly what shows us that this is the dark dimension is that we haven't been ended yet. The fact that we're still here to suffer and we get so close to, you know, blowing it all up but we don't and we're continuing to suffer really shows that we're in the dark dimension because if it was not darker we would have been ended it would have been over but no we have to live as long as possible to suffer as long as possible this is fucking crazy but oh my god this is this is wild let's go next ladies and gentlemen i come bearing good news Th is it really good there it is right there Whoa. H.R. 25, otherwise known as the Fair Tax Bill of 2023. If you are unfamiliar with Fair Tax and don't know if you support it or not, read the first sentence of the fucking bill. To oh, I remember this one. Now we're getting to the ones that I start to remember. I completely, completely disagree with this. But but I'll, I'll let it play play out. I'll say it at the end. I don't know. I'll, I'll say this right now. I don't know. If this guy is joking, and I don't know if he's being serious. Like, I don't know what side he's on. I thought he was on the side of this is good, and you're going to see why. But tell me in the comments below what side you think this guy's on. What, what side do you think Hate Crew Records is on? To promote freedom, fairness, and economic look at the opportunity by repealing the income tax and other taxes, abolishing the Internal Revenue Service, and enacting a national sales tax to be administered primarily by the states. Really, wow. all you gotta pay attention to is the fact that this abolishes the fucking IRS. No more goddamn income tax! Woo! My so this guy's cheering, right? I don't know if he's joking. I feel like he's serious. My favorite thing about this bill is the fact that they are saying what I've been saying for fucking years. Congress I has think found that federal income tax retards economic growth and has reduced the standard of living <laughs> to the American public. It also slows the capital formation necessary for real wages to steadily increase and lowers productivity. Listen, there's a lot of other things that are lowering productivity, not taxes. Impo taxes is one of them, though. This is unacceptable and unnecessary administrative and compliance costs on individuals and businesses. See, that is true. That part is true where, like, because the taxes are the way they are, there's a lot of manpower that needs to go into it. You need to have a whole accounting department now. 
and you need to like comply with all the tax laws and they're really weird and just overly complicated right they're very complicated with this proposal i don't know if it would be as complicated it probably would be they're just masking it or we don't know enough but what they're saying is a 30 percent tax on everything no more state tax no more income tax no more nothing tax you just pay 30 percent extra on everything and that's your tax you don't have a tax return you, you don't get taxed on your pay you just pay anything you buy 30 percent. that's it 30 percent more unnecessarily intrusive and we're going to go over why that's wrong. Prudes upon the privacy and civil rights of United States citizens. Also, hides the true cost of government by embedding taxes in the cost of everything you buy. And the big one is not being complied with at a satisfactory level and therefore raises tax burdens on law-abiding citizens. And you know what's ironic? And I'm going to give a little spoiler for the discussion at the end of this. Law-abiding citizens actually suffer the worst from this. It's the people who break the law that this is going to hurt. It's the, it's the people who break the law, who like income tax is bad, who hurts. I, I said that wrong. It's the people who like don't follow the law that income tax is like good for. I'm saying this so wrong. God damn it. Whatever. Let's just, let's just watch the video. It impedes upward social mobility. In short, income taxes, gone. Payroll taxes, gone. Estate and gift taxes, gone. Do you know what this means? This basically means you're going to get to keep your whole fucking paycheck and only get taxed on the goods and services that you buy. Effectively closing the loopholes that the rich use to stay rich and not pay He's so stupid. He's so stupid. Pay taxes. This guy is so dumb. No more hiding your money in shell companies or offshore accounts. It They're still going to do that. It means that the middle class doesn't have to carry the poor and the rich. <laughs> He's so wrong. Like, it's so sad. It means that illegals would have to pay their fair share regardless. You know what's ironic? He, th okay, this is why this guy, I, I, like, I wish he was joking. I don't think he is because he's just straight wrong, and I'll explain why piece by piece. No more of somebody on welfare with eight kids living and eating better than you. Okay, now, he's not wrong there. A lot of government assistance is given to people who just take advantage of it. No more waiting on the government to issue you a fucking refund because they took too much of your goddamn money. Yeah, hey, and they don't use it properly. See, there's some things I agree with, but overall, this guy's really wrong. But as excited as I'm getting, I'm pretty sure it'll never fucking pass. Because why would rich people in Congress vote against their money? They never will. Don't know if you know this, but your senators and representatives are doing backdoor deals to make themselves more money. Insider trading. And are exploiting the tax codes to keep more of it. True. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, your gross pay is within your grasp. No, it's not. And these waspy fuckers are going to steal it away from you. Do you realize the deficit wouldn't be out of control if Jeff Bezos had to pay taxes on that fucking yacht he just primed? That is true. It still bothers me that he shipped a ship. Imagine having that fucking money. Donald Trump would have had to pay taxes redoing his fucking jet to go campaign for an election he's never going to fucking win. Not kidding. If he has to run against DeSantis, he's fucked. Or hey, maybe I could still be president. But if you want to support the cause, go over to fairtax.org. And if you want to support more videos like this, might I suggest my Patreon? Subscribe. Which I don't. You know you wanna. Tell you. Yeah, I don't think I want Later. to. Okay. Let me explain why this is so bad. Let me explain why this guy is stupid. And it seems, and this is the sad part, and this goes back to what I said before. Most people are stupid. Most people don't understand what this means, right? And we can just see from the comments here, MJH over here actually knows what he's talking about. Or it looks like it, right? It looks like he actually read the bill, right? And he understood the bill. Because at the end of the day, the way income taxes work, and I'll actually bring up the infographic here, the tax brackets. Ready? Watch this, tax brackets. So the majority of people, right? The majority of people, here's the tax. God damn it. Okay, here we go. And I'll zoom this in so we can all see it. The majority of people, we'll, we'll say they're single, right? Or no, not married, file jointly. Here we go, single individuals like me, because I'm single. So at what point would a new 30% tax be better than what we have now? It would only be better than what we have now if you make $182,000 or more. Now, color me silly. 
I don't think a majority of people make $182,000 or more. So for anyone who makes under $182,000, right? And $1, sorry, $182,101. If you make up to $182,100, you are actually paying less in taxes than you would with this new system. So yeah, you're not getting taxed from your pay, but anything you buy, essentials you buy, you're gonna get taxed 30% on, which is more than what you get taxed regularly. I would say the majority of people fall in here. And the way that, I don't want this to get like, you know, into a tax lesson, but the way the taxes work is they don't take 22% of all your income. They take 22% of 44 to 95. Below that, they take less. And then below that, they take even less. So we're not getting taxed a lot if you don't make a lot. But what this new bill would do is it would tax it to 30% to everything. Now, granted, you could argue, oh, just, you know, don't buy things you don't need. It doesn't matter. This hurts the poor more than anything, and this helps the rich, because think about it like this. Who can afford to pay 30% more on everything? The rich who have infinite money. Who is this going to hurt? The people who pay 10% in taxes who now need to pay 30% on essentials that they already can't afford, even with the 10% tax? And the worst part is, look at the comments. Did you watch the video? What are you smoking? Shut up, bootlicker. Like, these people are, are like calling this guy out and like making fun of him when he's right. Now they're getting into fascism, but uh, yeah, you know, we're, we're gonna ignore that. But um, <laughs> this is crazy. This is just crazy. I don't know the specifics, but from what I know, this seems just straight up worse for the middle and lower class because. We pay less of this in taxes already, and then the rich people can afford it, and it's going to be more for us, and there's probably going to be some code that they could take advantage of to not do this. But who knows? Honestly, it's just a really bad bill, and it does not help the poor and the mid. Unless there's something I don't know, or math I'm not, like, seeing, it really looks, like, so obvious that this does not help people. It's when people don't know how much taxes they pay, because, you know, school doesn't teach it, another broken system. It's when people don't understand the way things are that they think this is better because it's new and because people like this guy exist, which, again, he could be right. Maybe there's something I'm not seeing. But from what I do see and what I do know, and hopefully from what I've explained, what would sound better to you? Excuse me. What would sound better to you? Paying 12% of your income in taxes or everything you buy getting raised by 30%? You tell me. Anyway, let's go next. Oh, this is a good one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh. 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 Look at Taiwan. Oh, USA sweating. Ukraine wants help, too. Calm down, guys. Oh. <laughs> so, as we saw before, World War III almost happened six times, and that's just from Russia. Look at all this stuff, dude. They're, like, it really seems like we're walking on the tripwire right now. This is scary. Let's go next. The other day, I was picking seeds out of a tomato, which is what I do in my free time, and oh. I was like, man. What a boring guy. There are more than 200 seeds in here. Whoa. This farming stuff is for chumps. If I yeah. planted these 200 seeds, I would get 200 tomatoes. And if I planted the seeds from th well, tomato plants, each tomato plant produces more than one tomato, let's be honest. Those tomatoes, I would have 4,000 tomatoes. Do that four more times, and I'd have 320 billion tomatoes. Jesus. Sell each of those tomatoes for $10 at the farmer's market, and boom, I'm a trillionaire. Well, it's not that easy. You need to have the space for them. You need to maintain them. You need to make sure there's pesticides and stuff like, you know, he's obviously oversimplifying it, but we won't be sticklers here. But then I learned that there was one little hiccup with my plan. Oh, what is Farmers it? Farmers don't replant their own seeds anymore. Why? They just throw them out. Why is Why? that? Well, according to the official manual for defending billion dollar agriculture companies, oh. saving seeds leads to all sorts of crazy problems like reduced crop yield, susceptibility to disease, and quote, you getting dumped by your girlfriend for using seeds every year like a dirty loser farmer instead of buying Monsanto's new tricked out seeds with all the latest features. So obviously he's joking a little bit, but they're basically not wrong. They're not wrong here. 
because oh my god my stomach just made a noise they're not wrong here because if you keep replanting the same seeds there's no like genetic uh variation or there's very little i think this is where i'm really speaking out of my ass i'm gonna be honest i don't know how plants copulate <laughs> let alone tomato plants but um i mean it seems like they go through just um mitosis right they just clone themselves a little bit but um i mean with probably slight genetic variation through each generation but yeah if you replant your same thing and they have like a susceptibility to like a certain thing and you keep replanting them and make them plentiful then a lot of tomatoes might be like you know susceptible to that one thing they're genetically disposed to which is not good you always want to have uh variability but uh let's see what's going on here so you know, I think this is all going to be about greed. I already see the comment where it says Monsanto is the Black Rock of agriculture. And for those of you who don't get that, Black Rock owns everything. But I'm not sure that's reliable source since the last 80 pages are just the words maniacal laughter over and over again. In truth, there are some practical disadvantages to saving seeds, but the real reason farmers stopped doing it after thousands of years is illegal. that a couple of companies figured out a way to make replanting your own seeds illegal almost anywhere of in the course. world. How of do they course. do it? Well, it's a little complicated. You see, saving and replanting seeds has been an important part of farming ever since farming was discovered by William von Farming, pictured here. But it's almost like if you have a plant that could produce more plants, you would use it. That practice got more complicated in the 1930s when we decided to invent inventing plants. Of course, humans have been cultivating yeah. new breeds of plants for as long as we've been growing them, but there was one huge problem with that. No one had gotten filthy rich off of it yet. So oh, in the 1930s, the US federal government passed the Plant Patent Act, and for the first time anywhere in the world, people could legally claim that a plant was their intellectual property. I love the imagery here. I love these two people just arguing. Of course, this didn't apply to naturally occurring plants. You couldn't just walk outside in 1930 and claim that grass was your idea. God filed that patent 55 million years ago. Yeah. To patent a plant, at least in the United States, you have to prove that you cultivated a distinct new variety of plant and are capable of making more of it. Just as an example. Capable of making more of it, what, by planting it? Example, here's the patent for plums. It says plum and has a picture of a plum. I like, what? What? Again, this this is another example of something that doesn't sound re real. How can you patent a plum? Now, granted, this is very complicated because what if you do, like, genetic modification to it? Then you should own that plum because you genetically modified it and you should own all its seeds. But we're getting into very tricky territory, both moral and stuff, moral and philosophical, of, you know, who owns what, should it be owned? But this is where it gets into greed. But this is some crazy-ass stuff. We're asking questions that I don't think should be asked don't know what more you would need. Now, at first, this patent law didn't really affect the way that farmers farmed. Up until the 90s, there were Rocks. only 120 patented plants, and farmers didn't generally grow or harvest them. But that all changed when a little mom-and-pop industrial chemical manufacturer called Monsanto had the wise oh, idea yeah. to shift their business model from selling plant poison to selling plants that couldn't be killed by their own plant poison. Wow. These Roundup-ready crops, mostly soybeans and corn, quickly took over nearly every farm in the U.S. and many more around the world because it turns out that not dying from weeds or weed killer is an important trait for crops to have. <laughs> the other day... I so, um, I didn't get the second part of this, you know, a little spoiler. But, um, yeah, this is just crazy. To put it bluntly, or to put it bluntly, let's let's just assume what happened, right? Monsanto figured out they could, you know, patent crops, so now you can't buy crops, and they probably lobbied, and they made it illegal to replant your own things. You have to buy it from them because they want money. That's basically probably what it is. Very sad, but again, another example of greed. Let's go next. I think my brain's going to explode. Okay, this guy. We've seen this guy before. This guy is just, like, crazy. He, I feel like he's so over the top. Again, he does say things I agree with, things I disagree with, but the way he does it is just so angry. Like, I, I'm a little worried his blood pressure's going up, but let's see. That's the only way I can react to this news right now, okay? Do you remember? He Do you remember so during the last month? We all like, it sounds like he just found the guy who stole stuff from his pockets. Sat through that TikTok committee hearing, and we just heard about how, you know, they were grilling the TikTok CEO, and they were screaming. This guy, and, you know, I don't mean to make fun of him, no offense to this guy, but... He looks like that classic guy who goes to like Starbucks and gets some weird coffee and then comes out and like lectures you about something. He's like a hipster. He looks like a hipster. At him that it was all Chinese spyware and they're going to steal our information. While that was happening last month. I don't blame him for getting angry though. Like I, everyone should be angry about what's happening. 
Documents from the Pentagon were being... Oh, I remember what this is. Okay, so this is the next big piece of news that's happening. This has to do with the leak from all the classified documents because of a fucking gamer. Leaked online from January no. until very recently, and we had no idea where the documents were coming from. There were members of the Department of Defense thinking this was a high-level member of the bureaucracy that was being blackmailed, maybe somebody who was being paid off, all these different things. And we finally have the answer in his- Okay, this guy's getting really animated. Jesus Christ, calm down, man. You're talking to a camera. The stupidest thing I've ever heard. It was a Discord server. It was a Minecraft Discord server. It's true. Hundreds of documents putting our entire yeah. spy network at risk Bro. and it was not TikTok. it was no, it a wasn't. discord server where people discuss minecraft and share racist memes like right now it looks like he's begging to stop someone's execution like if you muted the video and you removed the captions <laughs> you would think this guy's begging someone to not execute his family member with how animated he looks it's so funny called thug shaker central it was full of, it looks like he's of about teenagers. To cry. and one teenager was a 21 year old guy named jack texiera and jack posted on there trying to get clout uh. jack posted huh all you guys are nothing but a bunch of betas i have <laughs> high level military clearance and somebody replied no you don't you cuck so Gee, I don't even know if this is real, if that's what they really replied, but I can imagine it. I can fucking imagine it. Jack started posting pictures of Ukrainian battle plans. What the lists fuck? Lists of spies all over the world that Bro. are helping America. Bro. Oh my god. He didn't do Oh my god. do this for political reasons. He didn't he did it to try and get fucking clout. He didn't do this for an ideology. <laughs> he did this because he's fucking sad and had access because he works in IT. And everyone in our government's so old, no one thought, don't give the 21-year-old guy who's on Discord servers all Bro. day access to the United States Worldwide Intel Network. Bro. Now, we're going to have to hit, sit through a House committee. Another one. Another one. Of new congressmen and senators sitting there with their questions for the CEO of Discord. So as, mu as funny as this is, I'm actually really sad because I honestly think what he's saying is true. I think they're going to blame the, the United States government instead of blaming themselves, right? Instead of saying like, okay, we fucked up by giving a 21 year old access to this stuff, even if he does work in IT. Because they're dinosaurs, they don't understand technology. Instead of doing that, instead of blaming themselves, because they're obviously in the wrong, they're going to try and pin this on Discord. And the Discord CEO is going to come in, and they're going to read him the chat logs of them calling each other betas and cucks and stuff. And they're going to be like, what is a beta? What is a cuck? And the worst part is, Discord is probably going to get worse from this. And the, You know, Discord is actually really cool. Like, Discord keeps improving. I mean, granted, they put a lot of stuff behind Nitro, which I don't, I don't enjoy. But... Discord, for all it's it has, it's really good, you know, for the free person, right? Free server, free speech to your friends, free voice, free video, free sharing, free bots. A lot of free stuff. It's really good, and they keep improving it. And now I feel like Discord might get worse because they have to crack down on it because the United States government is stupid. It's so stupid. But it's fucking hilarious. They're going to have to say things like, mm -hmm, I see on Discord you have a thing called discord kittens bro tell me does uwu mean a good thing yes or no that's bro. what we're gonna have to sit through someone is bro. gonna there's gonna be a member of congress who's going to have to ask the questions <laughs> uh we were reading through the chat logs here and it said why is he so southern as tracer rule 34 futon. oh my i was gonna God. try to look that up on my phone but my intern knocked my phone out of my hand is that part of the Chinese spy network? That's so I'm fucking dead funny. Serious. I'm dead this is serious. so dumb. And it's because our government's run by the oldest people possible, while Facts. our technology has been advancing faster than they ever have. And like I said, we have so much advancement in such a little time, people can't keep up. Even young people sometimes can't keep up. We have members of Congress who are older than television. That's that's actually insane. But yeah, holy shit. This is insane. Like, what more can I say about this? This whole thing is just crazy.
and really sad and, and you know, kind of scary that this is one of the ways documents got leaked. Very important documents that can cost people their lives got leaked because a, a fucking 21 year old wanted to have a big dick. Craziness. Let's go next. Here we are at the Capitol of New York. Oh, we and went over this already. Are arresting tenants, organizing at the Capitol, supporting good cause. Albany police protecting and serving, not protecting, protecting and serving, and serving the people, but protecting and serving corporate landlords. Or to keep fighting for housing reform in New York. Together, tenants are strong. Yeah, together, I don't think we're strong anymore. There was a time before technology and stuff advanced where we were strong, but I think it's starting to fade away, and it's very sad. But yeah. Little little bit of an update on the situation where, you know, people want to fight back against unfair rules and unfair housing. You know, the thing everyone needs, which is a place to live. There's three things we need. Food, water, and a place to live. And you can kind of, like, get around the argument, oh, well, you don't need a place to live. You could live, you know, in the forest, or you don't need shelter. You need food and water. But yeah, you need food and water, but guess what? You don't need food and water, like, right away. You get food and water every three days. But that's not healthy, and you're going to die very soon. You don't need a house. Sure, you'll still live without a house, but you're going to die way sooner than someone with one. So you, you tell me. You tell me, mister. Because there's all these stupid arguments that go around. You know, yeah, uh, pretty, pretty interesting follow-up on uh, the things happening in New York against very high rent. Very, very nice. See, we're making progress, as you can see. Let's go next. To be able to see things clearly, your eyeballs need to be a certain shape. Oh. Today, though, around half of the world's kids have eyeballs that are too long. And I like how they're using Pokemon in this infographic. That's, a, that's an Apom and that's an Eevee. As a result, they have blurry vision. Welcome to Minute Earth. Most babies Whoa, are born with short minute. eyeballs. But as a baby grows, their eyeballs get longer. The lens and the retina get farther and farther apart. By the time Whoa. the kid is about six, their eyeballs are just the right length for the lens to be able to focus incoming light and form a crisp image right on the retina, rather oh, than focusing shit. well behind it. At that point, the brain sends a signal to the eyeballs, telling them to stop growing. But grow. starting a few decades ago, many kids, like more than 90% of kids in some countries, Whoa. these kids' eyeballs continue to lengthen well past that spot. Why is As that? a result, instead of focusing light right onto the retina, the lenses in these kids' longer eyeballs focus light on a point in front of the retina. From there, the light spreads back out, causing them to see a fuzzy image rather than a crisp one. Damn. For years, most scientists thought this was happening because of screens. Or, uh, more yes. specifically, because Always kids were spending most phone. of their time looking at things only a short distance away. Oh, you see, sure. our eyes focus most easily on stuff in the middle distance. In order to clearly see stuff far away, the muscles have to work to stretch the lens in order to bring those images back to the sweet spot on the retina. And in order to clearly see things close up, the muscles have to work to smush the lens to bring those images forward to the sweet spot on the retina. Oh. Scientists wondered whether kids' eyeballs were growing extra long to shift this entire range farther back, allowing them to see close-up stuff in focus without having to use their muscles, but leaving their eyes unable to focus on things far away at all, no matter how much they strained. But recently, we found that kids who... To be okay, so I didn't send myself the second part. Let's try and find it now. Where's the second part? Hold on. Uh, I know this is very unprofessional, but that's what we do here, so. Where is it? Where is it? It sucks to be a male hyena. I hope this only has two parts, though, but let me see. Okay, yeah, it only has two parts. Who spend a lot of time part. parked in front of a screen don't necessarily <laughs> have longer eyeballs than those who don't. Instead, it seems that the likely culprit is the hormone that carries the stop-growing signal from the brain to the eyeballs, oh. or really, a lack of this hormone. We still don't totally understand how the entire signaling process works, but we okay. do know that our eyes need to be exposed to a certain level of light in order for the hormone to form in the first we place. We need to go outside. Kids today, who only spend about half as much time outside as their parents did, simply aren't getting the light their eyes need to create enough of that hormone and give yep. the stop growing signal. Yep. As a result, their eyeballs keep lengthening past oh, yes. the sweet spot, creating an epidemic of blurry vision, the likes of which the world has never, uh, seen. In history, as always, another new thing in history we're experiencing. Luckily, there's an easy solution for future generations. Well, outside. Go outside. To See, that's not an easy solution because even though it is a solution, you know what else is a solution? Oh, you don't have money? Go get a doctorate. Go get, go become a PhD. That's a solution. No fucking duh. It's not a solution most people can fucking do, though. It's not realistic. Like, oh, what's the solution to being poor? Make more money. Well, no, duh. But can we realistically do that? Like, okay, yeah, what's the solution to this? Go outside. A lot of people don't go outside because there's no reason to anymore. People are isolated. People want to stay inside. People don't want to go outside. Outside sucks. And for different reasons I won't get into here. To watch your YouTube videos. 
We want to learn more about outside, No, we don't want to learn more. Outside is hot. Outside is fucking disgusting. Outside there's crime. You might get stabbed like the freaking <laughs> cash app creator in Chicago. <laughs> like, or, I'm sorry, in San Francisco. The same shit. But, um... Yeah, like, this is stupid. But the biggest reason, I don't really know why I sent myself this, other than to, like, kind of bring up the fact of, like, this is just another example of old people thinking, you know, oh, this is why your eyesight's so bad. You're on a damn phone all day, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, that technically is a offshoot of it. You know, we're inside looking at our phone, but we're inside in general, and it seems like that's what it is, not the phone. I mean, granted, we're inside on our phones or on the TV or whatever, but so are they. So are the adults. I don't see the adults going outside, but their eyes are good because they didn't have this when they were little. If they had this when they were little, they would have the same problem. And again, going outside is no longer a solution because even though there's still people that do go outside, there's a lot less you could do. I remember back in the day when I was a kid, I went through the middle shift of this in my mid-ages. For a good part of my childhood, I played outside with the neighborhood. I knew my neighborhood. I knew all the kids. We all got together. We all played. And once video game consoles became ready, readily available, video games got bigger, the internet got bigger, phones you know, started being smartphones, we all stopped meeting up, we all stopped hanging out, we all stopped playing freeze tag and you know, hide and go seek and stuff. We used to invent our own games outside to play because we were bored, we were kids, we were creative, right? We had to be, we had nothing else. After like technology got introduced to us and it became mainstream, we stopped hanging out outside, we stopped playing these games. So... It just doesn't happen anymore. But we used to. It used to happen. But it's not these screens, you know. Well, it is technically, but it's a it's a bigger problem. It's we're not going outside. Because people don't want to go outside anymore. You know, who could blame them when you have Netflix, right? It's like, how can you even blame them? But it's just sad. Anyway, let's go next. I'm still brand new to Congress. Yo, been... Jeff Jackson. We're getting double Jeff Jackson again. Let's go. There are 100 days. And I don't know if I'm not supposed to say this out loud, but... It's tr don't say it, Jeff Jackson, you're going to get shot. True and important, and if you don't know this, you need to. It's really clear from working there for just a few months that most of the really angry voices in Congress are totally faking it. So basically what he's saying is it's mostly bullshit. So this is also something that happens when you join like the job sector with big companies. You think these big companies look so nice, and they're engineered to look nice, right? I'll give an example with my current job. I work for lawyers. They're a very big law firm. They look very professional. They have a lot of good reviews. It is a burning city on the inside. Like it is the house is burning down. Like everything's a mess. We're barely holding it together. Like good things do happen. But if you see the inner workings, it does not look like the, like the outside. Like the outside of the house looks very nice. It looks clean. When you go on the inside, there's just like shit everywhere. Like that's honestly what it is. And I've been with multiple places that it's like this for. Where on the outside, it looks so good because the biggest thing they care about is looks and how it actually operates. And it kind of sounds like it's like that in Congress, too. These people who have built their brands around being perpetually outraged, it's an act. Marjorie Taylor Greene. I've seen a bunch of examples. Here's one. I've been in committee meetings that are open to the press and committee meetings that are closed. The Whoa. same people who act like maniacs during the open meetings That's are smart. suddenly calm and rational during the closed ones. Yeah. Why? Because there aren't any cameras in the closed meetings, so oh. their incentives are different. What yep. I've seen is that members of Congress Crazy. are surrounded by negative incentives. Crazy. There are rewards for bad behavior. And guess what? It has to do with greed. It also has to do with just getting votes and stuff because they get the politically charged people. They get the zealots. They get the crazies, right? No one's going to agree with you unless you're outlandish, unless you're extreme, unless you're crazy. Because who's also crazy? The extremists. Who's going to defend you till the day you die, till the end of the earth? The people who are crazy with your idea, right? It's not going to be the normal people who defend you who go the extra mile. It's going to be the crazy people. You know what the big one is? Being able to reach you. The big thing that modern media and modern politicians have learned is that if they can keep you angry, they'll hold your attention. Yeah. And they both True. want your attention. So yes. if you're a politician and you show certain media outlets that you can help them keep their audience angry... They'll give you their audience. This is a big, big issue. This is like obviously what he's describing here in this situation, but this goes beyond this. It's negative stuff that is beneficial for people. When you're benefiting off something bad, off something negative, and it's incentivized, it's going to ramp out of control without anything to stop it. If something does not come in to stop it, it's going to, get, it's going to feed into itself. It's like a never-ending cycle that gets worse and worse. It's really scary. It's really sad. 
And because so many politicians are willing to play that game, now they're in competition with each other to see how fake angry they can be. So that's real bad. But here's something good. What I love about this, about communicating with you directly, is that the incentives are different. They can be positive. They can be about speaking to you with respect and real information and in a normal tone of voice. Because if I can talk to you directly, I don't have to yell. And if you don't have to yell to be heard, the whole conversation changes. So going forward, when you hear some enraged member of Congress say something absurd, your first question shouldn't be, how can they possibly believe that? It should be... Do we think they actually do? Exactly. You, yo, Jeff Jackson saying what I'm saying. You have to question everything. Because they probably don't. And for those who want to see politics look less like WWE, honestly, I will keep you posted. Thank you, Jeff. Dude, Jeff Jackson, I love him. I love Mr. Jackson. He's such a cool man, yo. He's so, like, like he's just a down to earth guy. But, um, This shit's so funny. This basically reminds me of the thing that said in SpongeBob in the episode where they went to the to the bubble bowl or whatever the fuck it was called. And Squidward was getting them all ready, right? And he said, people want to sound loud when they want to feel, or, when, you know, people yell or are loud when they want to sound correct, right? And then Plankton just yells out, correct, or when they want to be smart, right? Or when they want to seem like they know what they're doing. It's true. People will yell. Because it's a big tactic, just psychologically, to make people think you're right. The loudest voice is the one that gets heard, not the one that's always right. But anyway, yo, I love Jeff Jackson. Very good message. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. It just goes to show you our government is a big, uh, big farce in a lot of ways. Let's go next. The pundits started to panic just because of a shit post by Putin. Okay, I remember what this one is. Again, we're getting closer to the common day, to the main, you know, to the current day, common day. What the fuck am I saying? We're getting closer to the current day now. This one is going to explain what I said before about how um, the yuan is not going to be the world currency, at least for right now, and why it's kind of not really a load of bullshit, but he's going to show us a little bit of the reality. Again, you have to question, like, where is he getting these facts from? But he's not yelling, so I kind of believe him. (laughs) He's not yelling, so he might be telling the truth. Like, when can you stop listening to that dumbass bunker bitch? You can oh mark my, my words. God. The Chinese yuan will never become an international currency. Okay, let's mark his words. The Chinese yuan, not going to be a national currency. If it is, I don't know if this guy's an actual doctor, but doctor, um, I don't want to butcher his name, but the, the very nice doctor here. Let, let's mark his words and let's see. Let alone the main one. Why? Because China doesn't want it to happen. <laughs> Putin might want it to happen, but she doesn't. Here's why. Yeah. Firstly, you should know that China's wealth is concentrated in a group of crazy, crazy rich people. Wow, it's almost like that in the rest of the world. It's almost like the top 1% anywhere own more than the other 99. They have wealth beyond your wildest dreams. Oh my god, and I could dream a lot. Okay, you might think their closets are filled with Hermes or, or Chanel. No, they're filled with cash from the floor to the fucking ceiling. Jesus. Just like rich people elsewhere, uh, they are assholes with shady businesses. <laughs> but what makes them different from the American rich assholes is that they Those don't want to assholes. stay in a country that made them rich. Weird, huh? Their entire life pursuit is to fucking run, or at least help their kids run. Folks in China even use the English word run to specifically refer to the action of leaving the country. Crazy. So, it sounds like fucking uh, North Korea. Rich people want to leave, but the only thing that holds them back is the fact that their wealth is yuan denominated. You know what I mean? Then the yuan. They can't spend their money elsewhere. Yeah, why? Because yuan is not the world currency. It's not a national currency. You can only use the yuan in China. You can use the dollar almost anywhere. China doesn't let them sell their yuan beyond a certain quota. So rich people can only spend a tiny share of their wealth outside China. Now imagine what will happen if Yuan becomes an international currency that's really exchangeable. These mega rich people will be out of their birdcage. They'll swarm into luxury properties outside China like zombies chasing meat. And back home, the Yuan denominated assets will just collapse. The Mm -hmm. currency, the stocks, the real estate will all turn into worthless shit in a matter of weeks. You think wow. the CCP will let that happen? No. No way. <laughs> you can be rich, but your ass belongs to the state. Yep. Okay, now you might want to ask why rich people want to leave China. 
I was well, going to ask that actually. That's a long story. I'll have to talk about it next time. But in the meanwhile, please stare at this graph carefully. This graph is very important. And tell me, do you really think Chinese yuan will replace the US dollar anytime soon? So let's look at the graph here. So world foreign exchange reserves, right? How much money is in all these reserves? 60% of it about is US. After that, it's the Euro. After that, it's the yen. It's the Japanese yen. After that, it's some weird British shit. After that, I got no clue what that is. That might be the yuan, but I don't even know. I don't see where the yuan is. It might be the one that's 2.8%. I can't really tell. I don't know what RMB is. Let's, let's check what RMB is. RMB currency. RMB is... Okay, no, that... that yep, that's the Chinese one. I, is that the yuan? Is R, let me look this up. Is RMB the same as the yuan? A unit of renminbi is a yuan. Okay, so it is the yuan. So the yuan is 2.8% of the world foreign exchange reserves. Now, granted, that could go up, but I don't think this is going to happen. And look at the comments, right? Very interesting perspective puts what happens in perspective. Not going to lie, this is a perspective I've yet to hear. Some good points. And, you know... A lot of bricks fear mongering just to promote digital currency so it'll drive higher demand for it and they can cash it in big time. <laughs> Excuse me. So one of the things that they could be doing is they're hyping it up. They're saying, oh, yeah, yeah, it's big. It's the next big thing. It's it's replacing the dollar. That could be a tactic to try and get people to adopt it so it can replace the dollar. They're trying to make the, the you know, the idea true. But very interesting. This is what I was talking about, how it's not that likely that the yuan will replace the dollar <laughs> because a lot of times they said stuff will replace the dollar but it didn't but anyway very nice video let's go next meanwhile at the fortress of axis copium solitude at the relic headquarters <laughs> this is so funny by the way <laughs> yes our plan of helping relic release an unfinished game is working this is we so lied funny. through our teeth with devlog videos saying the game was being delayed to improve the quality then promoted our 70 dollars special edition then at launch removed basic gameplay features that are required for any modern day rts Bruh. we don't even have a surrender button and those motherfuckers still bought it we so i'm not gonna play this for too long because this is more gaming oriented but i just wanted to show this real quick of like you know everything's stupid everything's bad everything's breaking in the gaming industry too i can make a whole separate thing about the gaming industry but my whole channel is pretty much focused on games or at least it used to be so um i'm not gonna go too much into gaming here but yeah even the gaming industry sucks i just really thought this was funny though because he's like mimicking skeletor and he's doing it well right, let's go next oh this is long okay maybe let me see this real quick what is this about uh, look forward, the Democrats tell us. Focus on the future. Might have started. Okay, I don't remember what this is about, but it's kind of long, so I think we're going to end it on Skeletor. We'll, we'll end it on a good note with Skeletor, because this is already going kind of long. So unfortunately, we couldn't get to everything again today. I mean, we're pretty close to, to recent stuff, though, because I am remembering it. But uh, we're going to stop here, so I hope everyone enjoyed, like I said. You can send me stuff on TikTok. My username is Technix. You could send that to that account. And uh, I can put it in the main video if it's good. I can react to the things you guys send me. But remember, it has to show the dark dimension. You can't be racist or anything. But anyway, I stream every day at Twitch TV says Technix channel at varying times, mostly at night. Catch me there. You could hang out. And I hope everyone enjoys.